Okay, this is Bruce at Bookmap. Welcome to the platform uh, Bookmap platform details webinar. Risk disclaimer: Trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, you can go to Bookmap.com. Uh, there's a free trial for 14 days, and this also opens up and allows access to the uh, free resources that come along with the trial or current customers, uh, that being the uh, educational course, uh, as well as the advanced uh, order flow um, uh, webinars that we have at 11 uh, Eastern uh, every day. Okay, so in fact, I'm going to um, uh, give that link out to you so you can get a peek. Uh, if you're not a uh, current uh, customer or in trial and uh, you want to see what we cover, uh, then uh, you'll have to stick around until 11 and uh, we will... Um, uh, we'll start the webinar then. Okay. So in another half hour, uh, and, uh, yeah, let me get that link for you in, in just a minute here. I'll put it into the chat. Uh, and, um, okay. So, uh, the, the trial, how to sign up for the trial. If you're interested here, uh, and check out Bookmap. uh, come to bookmap.com and, uh, we, you can sign up for the free webinars here. That's, that's these webinars right now. Okay. The, um, uh, platform details webinars, uh, and then uh, members can sign in here, click on explore. Uh, if you're new here, uh, you might want to check out some of these intro videos. They're very short. And um, we'll just continue to scroll down here as you go through some of the advantages and benefits of Bookmap, some of our partners, uh, and then connectivity, which is down here. Uh, if you're connecting um, to the futures or equities, uh, we, we offer both. Um, the uh, We're not a data provider. Okay, so you will need to um, connect via one of these data providers or brokers. All right. Uh, there are many other brokers out there as well uh, that uh, offer these uh, data feeds. This is what you need uh, to connect to Bookmap. Okay. So we'll scroll down a little bit further under the pricing here. Uh, this is where you can find the, um, uh, the free trial. Okay, so in general, there is one version of Bookmap, the Bookmap Basic. Okay, it is the basis for uh, the other um, uh, featured uh, 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 different. Um, there's different features for the other um, uh, offerings here. Okay, so um, if it's the same Bookmap, the difference are um, well, for example, between the advanced and the basic. Okay, it's the add-ons, it's the ability to trade from the chart, the one-click trading, uh, and then also these add-ons here. So the uh, large lot tracker, uh, the volume and order book and balance, the iceberg detector, the correlation tracker. Uh, these are proprietary add-ons that we created uh, that allow insight to these markets. Okay, that we come from the high frequency environment uh, and uh, an order flow. And these are proprietary indicators that, that look for these kinds of imbalances in the limit order book uh, that give you uh, that, that kind of transparency. Uh, there's a quant um, uh, feature as well. Uh, you can connect your own data uh, and, um, uh, you know, do your, do your proprietary studies uh, with, the, uh, with the quant version. If you want the complete list of the comparisons, you can click here. Uh, that'll take you right to it, uh, and you can uh, take a look at and see the differences. Most of the differences are going to be down here. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. You can follow us here on Twitter if you want the most up-to-date information or retweets from other Bookmap users to see what they're doing. Uh, and uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, and uh, any uh, videos that are updated or, or uploaded, uh, you'll get alert if you like. And um, uh, this is where you'll find all, all, the, all the videos here. So if you're new here, I would re recommend going through the features and components to get an overview of what Bookmap is, what it's showing you. Uh, and then uh, start to dive into the um, uh, order flow video snippets here. Now, these are very concise, short videos that just go over a lot of the phenomena that we see uh, in the limit order book or in, in the volume. Uh, and um, uh, we go through these in detail in the advanced webinars, okay? So, uh, and answer questions and, and really get into the analysis of it. Uh, these are very short and concise here. Uh, that's uh, 
uh, just gets to the point, uh, but the deeper analysis will be in the webinars, okay? Uh, you can see our ProTrader uh, series that we had in September here. If you want to look at uh, or watch some of these videos, some of the professional traders that use Bookmap. And there's some selected webinars if you want to take a look at the advanced order flow uh, webinars here. And there's also platform detail webinars here. Okay. All right. So, uh, and let me get you the link for, the, uh, uh, for today's uh, advanced uh, webinar. So you can uh, you can register and then attend that. Okay, I'm going to put this into the chat box for you. Okay. Okay, there you go. So if you want to click on that link, uh, then you can uh, register for uh, uh, the webinar. It'll start in about uh, 18 minutes, uh, so uh, 11 Eastern. Okay, so we had non-farm today, uh, so uh, some volatility comes into the market, uh, and um, uh, let's take a look at, um, we've been looking at the NASDAQ, uh, why don't we continue on with that, the ES really hasn't been moving too much, although we do we do see some movement today, it's really not a lot, um, but um, uh, we'll, yeah, let's check out the NASDAQ here and see what's, uh, what's going on over there. Um, all right, let me zoom out here. Okay, now I, you can see here I don't have the um, um, the data from the 8:30 uh, economic release of the non-farm. Uh, so here I have the uh, uh, the cash session. So I opened my book map and started collecting data uh, just before the cash session right here. So here's our 9:30 Eastern time. Uh, the cash session opens, and then you can see the um, uh, the price action since then. Okay, so just a lot of sideways action uh, for a while, uh, and then you can see the move here to the upside. Okay, I'm sorry, this is the 6E. What are, what are we looking at here? Okay, I'm sorry about that. Let's uh, let's take a look. Here we go. All right, uh, here's our Nasdaq, and here's here's our 9:30 open. Uh, this looks a lot better because you can see the volume that comes into this market. Uh, any of these uh, stock market uh, indexes here. In the futures, and uh, just a tremendous amount comes in at 9:30, uh, and basically dwarfs the overnight session within 15 or 20 minutes. And um, uh, we'll, we see uh, we see reaction here, nice move uh, to the upside immediately, pullback and uh, continuation, another pullback and continuation. Okay, up into some pretty high liquidity up in these areas here. So um, now before I get into, um, I, I see there's qu actually quite a few guys in here. This is a, a nice trend that's uh, evolving uh, that are uh, currently in the uh, either the trial or uh, uh, current customers that have been with us for, for quite a while uh, attending the um, uh, platform details uh, webinar, which is great because that's what these are for is to, uh, go through the details in this um, uh, in this webinar and answer your questions. What about the functionality of this? How does this component work? What does it show? Uh, and what are the advantages of it? Then uh, once you've you've gained that understanding, it's great to get into the um, advanced analysis of the order flow. All right. Um, yeah, Jack, I'm addictive. Uh, thank you. <laughs> that's uh, that's funny. Um, well, let's um, uh, let's take a look here. So, you know, before I get uh, dive into some of the order flow here, and we will take a look at some, uh, but I want to explain what Bookmap is showing you. All right, uh, and then um, uh, then we can uh, start to understand some of the order flow here. Because if you're new here, and there are, there are quite a few new guys in here, um, and uh, you know I welcome you to the to the webinar uh, to begin with. But um, uh, secondly, uh, you know this this look may look very foreign to you. Okay, there are um, uh, visualization of the market. Now it's actually quite straightforward and simple to be honest what we're really showing you here is historical best bid and offer the volume and where it traded uh, and the um, uh, the historical view of the limit order book the dome okay so what's going on outside of the volume where are they bidding and offering historically we have that recorded here okay now just to simplify that uh, I'm going to strip off these layers of information. We're just going to put a candlestick chart on here. Okay, we go through this process every day here. 
All right, uh, just to show you guys uh, what um, uh, what Bookmap uh, is displaying and uh, how to understand this data. Okay, because we all know what a candlestick chart looks like and what it's displaying. All right, so uh, yeah, you can see open, high, low, close of a five-minute period here, uh, and um, and uh, the next five-minute period. Now, the problem with this candlestick chart is, well, there's there's many. I mean, it's it's nice to be able to see the the wicks and the bodies and start to understand a bit of the the buying pressure or selling pressure uh, based on that. But at best, I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's like reading the tea leaves here. Uh, we don't really know. Uh, there could be all sorts of other things going on within these uh, uh, candlesticks that we just don't know about. Uh, so, uh, uh, for example, the volume. Where did it trade on these candlesticks? Where is the majority of it? Uh, what about uh, um, uh, exactly when did it trade uh, in this five-minute period? What about some microstructures that were broken and then we see a lot of volume pour in? And what type of volume? Aggressive buying or aggressive selling? That's all not here in this chart. Okay, uh, we just have a subchart of volume, and we're accustomed to that view. So we just know that there was, uh, uh, you know, in this area here, a little bit of a spike uh, in volume, etc. Et, et you know, that's uh, that's all we know. So uh, that's a problem. I mean, we're making financial decisions here, uh, and uh, we want to understand uh, this important data. Okay, so uh, let's uh, first just turn on historical best bid and offer. Okay, it's the uh, red and the green line here. Red is the historical best offer, and green is the historical best bid. Okay, and I really like turning on this this view here because already you start to see the differences. Okay, you start to see microstructural areas, and they're really not that micro. Uh, for example, look at this kind of a head and shoulders up here. All right. Uh, this is a, obviously a pattern that we, we're all accustomed to. Well, it's lacking here in this five-minute uh, candlestick chart, and we see the breakdown here, okay? And we see the retest of this area, and then it breaks down uh, again. Where does it go to? Into this structural area down here that's in the chart. All of that is lacking here in this five-minute candlestick. Um, and um, and we, we rebound off of that uh, and um, come back up, retest these areas, and finally, the aggressive buyers, they come in in this area here and pull price up into new highs, okay? So we're gonna see uh, really what unfolded here, all right? Uh, we're gonna see them lift the offer pretty aggressively, I imagine, in this area here. I'm very curious to see what uh, the limit order book looks like down here. Uh, I imagine we're gonna see some bids uh, in here supporting price, and uh, I imagine we'll probably see some, uh, some aggressive volume in maybe initiate in this area here. Uh, let's see. So we'll, we'll uh, let's turn that on. Okay. All right. Well, you know, here's the aggressive buying, pulling the price up, as you can see. Uh, but the uh, this area here is, um, uh, let's, uh, let me uh, kind of um, make these dots a little bit smaller here. All right. There we go. Okay, yeah, we see some aggressive uh, buying that start to start to pull price up here, uh, but um, it's a little bit back and forth here. Uh, you can you, but you can see. Um, look at this area down here. This is where you can see the buyers started to to get very aggressive. Okay, pulling price up. All right, majority of these dots here, it's uh, aggressive market buy orders. Okay, so let's zoom in here, and what do we, what what do we mean by market buy orders and, and market sell orders and aggressor volume? Okay, so this is really how these markets work. Best bid, best bid here, the green line. Best offer, the red line. Okay, we see a green dot here on the red line. This is a market buy order. Okay, it's aggressive because they cross the spread. They wanted into the, the market immediately, and they took liquidity. Uh, they made an agreement here uh, to uh, uh, take the next level of liquidity that is offered in the limit order book, uh, and that was right here, these six contracts. Okay, And they took liquidity from this area here. Right? They did not provide it, um, and um, uh, that's, uh, that's an aggressive action. All right? It's the same here when they're hitting the bid with the uh, market sells. Okay, they're taking liquidity off of the best bid. 
All right, and uh, we're just recording all of that data here for you. Okay, so it's it's really quite quite simple and straightforward. Now, where it gets interesting uh, is, um, and and let me zoom into some of these areas because I want to show you something. If we can just zoom in here, and a little bit of latency as you can see between best bid and offer and the traded volume. Um, but um, I'll continue to zoom in, and we're going to pull apart every single trade that took place here. All right? This is how these markets trade. All right? We're down at uh, microsecond level. Uh, we can continue to zoom and look at uh, uh, nanosecond level. You know, if we uh, look at the timeline down here. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, we can see this cluster and flurry of activity that took place. Okay, uh, and uh, most of these are going to be for a small lot size, and you're going to see in your time and sales. Look at this is for a volume of one. We can use this data tip tool. We can hover over this dot. It gives me the date, the time, what was on the ask at this price level, and uh, that's the liquidity. So 15 contracts, uh, and then the the volume. This was for one. This was a one lot. This is a one lot. This is another one lot. So you can see, like, algorithmically what's going on here. Like, you know, there's just a flurry. You're going to see a string go through your time and sales of just one lots. And why is that? Uh, a lot of these guys in the, in the algorithmic environment, uh, they, they don't want to show their size. Uh, so uh, instead of uh, large block orders going through, you won't see that. Uh, you won't see, like, 25, one trade for 25 uh, lots. Uh, you'll see 25 trades for one lot. All right. So uh, now uh, as we continue to zoom out, though, this just becomes a bigger dot. Right. And and we, we're giving you the overall. It says this is for a volume of 21. OK. And as I continue to zoom out, I continue to just visually aggregate this data together. OK. It's, it's not uh, it, all the data is still there. Uh, as I as I displayed, you know, and we continue. We'll just zoom in back again. So it's all here, right? Every single market event is recorded. Okay, we have a, um, a central um, or a complex uh, uh, event processor engine that can handle all of these data points and plot them for you. Okay, and uh, we get a real clear objective view of what happened here. But as I zoom out, you can see the overall. Uh, effect here. Now this this volume dot here, we're, we see actually a little bit of selling in here. That's the pie display, okay? Uh, and it's for a volume of 47. As I continue to zoom out, you're going to note some of these other areas in these pie displays here. There's buying and selling. There's so many transactions that took place uh, that we're showing you the overall delta of it with the pie display, okay? So that's, uh, that's the traded volume. Uh, and um, you can see, uh, for example, one of the things that we cover in order flow uh, in the advanced uh, section is look at this uptrend here. Okay, look at the order flow, the transactions in this uptrend. This is indicative of the uptrend. Okay, we have more aggressive buying at higher highs. We broke out of this little auction right here. We accepted above it, uh, and you see more aggressive uh, buying at higher areas. Look at the pullback here. Okay, uh, this is uh, it, it. It does breach this little area right here. It makes a, a lower low, uh, but uh, look at the amount of aggressive selling down here. Twelve contracts. Right, that's that's not enough compared to over here. 167, uh, 113 plus uh, 97 here. The buyers are, are overwhelming the sellers. It's exhausting on the Excel side here, and we continue to the upside. All right, that's how order flow works in a trend, typically. Okay, uh, and it, this is uh, not a bad example of it. Okay, we can see a distribution up in this area here in the order flow. Uh, I'm getting my, ahead of myself here. We'll, we're going to cover a lot of this in the uh, in the advanced, uh, but uh, uh, what, do, what do I mean by the distribution? Well, you know, we see higher, more volume at these higher highs, a little less up here, okay? Nice little peak here, but then look at the sellers start to come in, and look at, we make a, no, a, a lower low here, and we see a lot of aggressive selling here, okay? That is different than what we saw, these little areas of exhaustion on the uptrend, right? Okay, we're seeing a distribution in the order flow. 
Okay, so I'm anticipating lower lows, and that's exactly what we get. And look how we can see here more volume trading at lower lows, and now we're starting to exhaust out a little bit. I mean, there's a little bit of uh, buying in here as well, uh, but uh, for the most part, there is less aggressive buying at these lower highs. Okay. All of that's lacking in this candlestick chart. There's there's no question there. Um, so in fact, let's uh, let's just take the candlestick chart right off. Okay. All right. So now we've just covered uh, one aspect here, uh, and that is the um, uh, just the traded volume, and that alone uh, we're already seeing like uh, some pretty nice advantages uh, with this vis uh, visualization of it. Uh, and, and why why do I say that? Because if you have a footprint chart, uh, it's going to be similar to the candlestick. It's going to rotate within an area of a period or of a rotation uh, bar. And it's going to aggregate that data until there's either a new time period or uh, it's met its rotation uh, requirement and a new bar is formed. Okay, We don't do that here. We show every single event with the historical best bid and offer. Okay, uh, so you can see now these little structural areas and flurries of activity, and you can see where um, uh, the buyers come in here. Okay, uh, we this auction uh, in this little area here has now been breached, and we see buyers are starting to take control. Look at the pullback here, and we see these little exhaustive areas. All this kind of data is here. And we can read it and use it to our advantage. Uh, and um, uh, this is uh, what's lacking in the uh, uh, footprint charts uh, be due to the, uh, the aggregation. Okay. All right. All right. So that's the just the traded volume. Okay. Now uh, we want also want to know another side of the story here: the auction. Okay. Where are they auctioning for this product? Right. On the on the bid and on the offer, well, usually, typically, the way that uh, we uh, uh, access that data is in the dome. Okay, this is your dome here in Bookmap, the depth of market. Okay, it's called COB, the the current order book column, and you see these numeric values here. Okay, between these two white lines, this is the lit book. Okay, this is this is the dome. We have 10 deep here on the on the offer, 10 on the bid. This is your best bid and offer right here. Okay, these uh, values display uh, traders lined up providing liquidity. They want to be buyers down here. Or they want to be sellers up here. Okay, so look at these. Look at these areas here. We see um, uh, well at 45 here, 100, 104 contracts. Okay, uh, so they want to they want to buy down here at, at 60.45. Okay, and we'll see though uh, as we come down here. Uh, if they stay in the book, or, are, or is it fake? Is it fake liquidity? Okay, uh, and uh, we'll test this area and we'll see if they remain or not, and if they get filled. Okay, now the dome gives a nice snapshot of the current market, but when this data changes, and you can see these numbers are rapidly changing right now, um, uh, they're adding and pulling liquidity, and you have to remember these areas, uh, remember how much they had before, uh, and um, uh, you know, are they still there? What about areas around it? Are they bidding in front of it? Uh, or are they pulling their bids and adding it to lower levels? Uh, what about the offer? That is a lot of data to um, uh, keep in your head, right? Uh, and um, uh, and we don't know if, uh, you know, they may pull or not, okay? So the, that's the, the problem here with this dome is that this is fleeting data, okay? Uh, uh, once uh, it is um, uh, updates, uh, that that uh, that data is lost. Okay, uh, so the pr the problem um, that problem is solved here uh, by uh, by Bookmap by showing the historical evolution of the dome here. So let me explain. Okay, I'm going to turn on the um, uh, the heat map here. All right. So and let's zoom in here. Okay. So these numbers here. All right, are given in this window here. This is your best bid, current best bid and offer right now, the dash lines. Okay, and this this number is the last traded volume. Okay, so these numbers here in the in the uh, limit order book are are given a graphical representation in the heat map. So very bright areas are 
high liquidity. Okay, if it's darker, it's a lot less liquidity. Okay, and uh, when these numbers, uh, you know, when they add and pull liquidity, well, you're going to see the um, the heat map um, uh, change to represent that uh, that new uh, new state of the uh, limit order book. Okay, where this gets interesting is we record that data and then project it onto the chart. So these little striations that you can see in here, this was the adding and pulling of liquidity. Okay. Uh, and um, so they they were uh, showing some interest here on the on the bid, and then they showed a little bit more, and a little bit. Then they pulled a little bit, and uh, and then they added back in. Okay, so now we can start to gauge and understand uh, these traders, uh, and answer those questions of of uh, how long they stayed in the book, um, and uh, their intent to trade. What about the areas around it? Well, it's all here. Okay, so let's zoom out. Right, and we can start to gauge and understand larger areas of liquidity that have stayed in the book. Look at this area here, okay, at uh, 60.45. We were looking at it earlier, and we see the breakdown here. Okay, this is actually a nice flip of the book. Um, and uh, what do what do I mean by that? High liquidity here on the uh, on the bid flips to the offer. All right. Now, it didn't stop these guys. They're still we're still uh, uh, trading through it at the moment. But uh, some nice, uh, nice battles kind of going on right now. But look at the areas down here between 60, 40 and 41. High liquidity. OK, uh, the sellers didn't even take them on. OK, we, we see the nice move to the downside, but they, they did not go any further into this high liquidity down here. Uh, in this auction, uh, they saw the buying interest here and uh, decided not to take them on. We rotate up to find more sellers. We find them up here in the limit order book. We go right to them like a magnet. Okay. Yeah, JH, um, uh, I think I, I covered this when you were in the room the other day. Um, understanding uh, the um, high liquidity first, and then understanding their intent to trade. Did they stay in the book or did they not? Okay, uh, and uh, we do show that. We show it very clearly. Uh, and um, uh, just click on the move tool here, the hand, and uh, we can uh, we can zoom in. And let's take a look at this area right here. Did they trade or did they not? Well, it's pretty pretty obvious, right? They pulled. Okay. Although we do see transactions take place later, and we 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 do have um, you know, it's kind of fast and furious after this non-farm, uh, but um, there's some uh, uh, some latency here, uh, and um, uh, just uh, let's just zoom out a little bit and just uh, keep it in mind though. So these guys here, they were waiting, right, and then they pulled, and uh, where do they pull and and uh, add to? Well, I mean, they were already here. Uh, they they looks like uh, they pulled from from these areas here and added here down below, okay? So they're not interested in trading here, they're interested in trading here, okay? We just found out a lot of information about this market, okay? Uh, this was fake liquidity. I mean, uh, they, they showed interest for a long time and this is long-term liquidity, right? They stayed in here for quite a while, okay? Uh, but in the end, they, they did not have the intent to trade. We just answered that question. Okay. And we also got a lot more insight to their behavior. Okay. Not so interested here at these levels. They're interested more at these levels down here and then down here. Okay. That's how this auction uh, played out. Okay. Uh, and uh, we made a distinction between longer term liquidity and shorter term liquidity uh, and their intent to trade. Okay. Now, what, what um, we, I, I defined here the uh, longer-term liquidity. What about that shorter-term liquidity? Uh, uh, that's a uh, high liquidity that may jump into the book here, like these guys here, uh, but uh, and then they pull, right? Uh, they did not trade in this area here. Although we do see some transactions, they do they they pulled in this area here, all right, and here. Uh, and um, that shorter-term liquidity. Uh, it just stays in the book for um, a, a brief moment. Usually, we note that, uh, well, it's a lot of market-making activity between these areas of higher liquidity. Uh, and it's also uh, these, um, uh, they don't, uh, they may have other, uh, well, they may, they may be getting filled on uh, micro levels or, or for, 
you know, smaller moves. Or, or a lot of times you see this kind of fake liquidity in these areas, okay? Like in these areas here, they 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 added, they added, but they're they're pulling as well, right? Uh, and um, uh, it skews the auction, and that stands, that starts to answer your question about uh, the um, intent of these traders, okay? That uh, uh, they're not they're not really interested here; they're more interested here, okay? And let's look at this area here. Okay, so uh, JH, this answers your question very nicely. High liquidity, they stay in the book and they're getting filled here. Okay, the transactions are taking place within their their liquidity. Did these guys have the intent to trade? Absolutely. Okay, there, there's no question about it. They're getting filled, right? So we know that that they're interest they're interested traders here at this price level. Okay, and we saw that we didn't even, the buyers, they traded into them and they kind of, um, you know, uh, it trickled off, right? It it, uh, it kept uh, it kept um, them from uh, trading through and taking these guys on, okay? Now here, they finally took them on and they traded through, okay? They just took all of the liquidity, right? And we see the move to the upside, okay? So... Anyway, I've gone over my time. Uh, I've I gave you the link here. Um, I'm going to put it in here again, uh, and uh, you guys uh, can join us now. I'm going to jump over to the advanced uh, webinar. There's the link if you came in late, uh, and we'll continue on with the advanced analysis. Okay. All right, guys. Yep. See you there. Bye.